Welcome back to the early edition of Sneakers and Cleats. 10 o'clock on a Monday, bright and early, coffee in hand. It is June 17th. This is episode 110. Remember to download, rate, review, subscribe to the Sneakers and Cleats podcast on the News 4 and Fox Facebook pages. I'm here with David Chancellor. David, how are you today? I'd take uh, exception to your bright and early. This <laughs> is... Uh... This is towards the end of the day. Well, this is midday for you. This is at least midday. This is the tipping point of uh, midday to uh, well into the afternoon. For someone who comes in at 3.30 in the morning, um, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is kind of mid-afternoon. For me, this is early. But anyway, uh, it uh, Monday's good. Monday weekend is good. Was, weekend was good. Everything's fine. Monday is good, um, especially after Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. Um, we're going to talk U.S. Open, which was the Father's Day gift that just kept on giving last night. Um, Rory and Rory basically choked and Bryson came up with some brilliant shots. So we'll talk about that. Caitlin Clark, uh, getting her head taken off by Angel Reese yesterday. We'll talk about that. Come on. Um, against the Chicago sky. Is there, <laughs> is their rivalry good for the sport or not? Plus I have a bone to pick with David, oh. um, from something he said right here on this very podcast me, last year. Let me guess. I, I have let me, a feeling let, you're going to be able God, to guess. Let me, let me guess. Um, three little letters. <laughs> Actually, it's not. Oh, okay. Actually, it's not. I'm okay. surprised for you. It's okay. not that. All right. Um, assuming you're assuming you're talking about Dak. I was. Yeah, no, yes. I'm not talking about Dak. All right. Good. I have a whole other aspect to get to. So, um, David, first and foremost, how was your Father's Day? It was great. Um, we went. Well, we went to gyms. Man, I hadn't been to gyms in forever. Uh, you've you've lived here I long have enough. Not been to gyms. Oh God. I've also not been to Bill Miller's. Ru oh, what? Okay. So this is this is what we're going to do very fast. These are the things that you're going to do. You're going to go to Bill Miller. You're going to get a sweet tea, and you're going to get uh, an order of the brownies. Anybody can do the barbecue. You're going to get the brownies, the sweet tea, and possibly the order of green beans. Those are the three things that if if you show up and you order those, everybody knows you're, you're, you're a local. When it comes to gyms, I found something out uh, last week. I told somebody here that I was going to gyms for Father's Day, and they said, "Oh my God, you got to get the spaghetti." And I said, okay. "The spaghetti," and they said, "Oh my God, it's 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 Italian restaurant quality." I did not get the spaghetti yesterday. I got breakfast. They have great br biscuits. They have great grits. Um, I love gyms. Um, go to gyms. Um, by the way, Father's Day was good. We did that, and I got a really cool gift. Um, my family, my wife gave me two tickets to the Def Leppard concert that's coming in August. Nice. I am psyched. <laughs> uh, this is the fourth time that I will have seen them. This is, I've actually, I'm one of the ones, I don't think rare ones, but I'm one of the ones that has seen them where uh, the drummer had pre-accident and post-accident. Oh, really? With the art. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I, I've seen them a lot. I love them. Uh, they're one of my all time favorite hair band groups. So, uh, we're going to be rocking out at the Alamo dome. I think it's August 16th. I think it's August 16th. Don't bother David on August 16th. No, <laughs> uh, but it was good. Well, that's great. And you catch some of the U S open last night. I watched, I, I tuned in just long enough to see Rory choke twice. <laughs> so that was, that was pretty much I mean, what you needed that, to see. That's all we needed to see. That was what you needed to see. Um, so as, we before we get to everything, we're, let's start with our number game as we usually do. Number ten. So this is one ten. So mm -hmm. what does number ten remind you of? Pele is the number ten that I came to my, that came to mind last night when I was thinking about this, as well as Eli Manning. Eli oh, Manning those is are the number good. ten. There's a cowboy who's number ten, and I can't think of it. So let's just go with Pele. All right, I'm, I'm going with Eli. Eli is who I thought of just because it's more my generation. But do you do you think Eli's a Hall of Famer? Yeah, he beat he beat him. He he won two Super Bowls. Is that what gets you in the Hall of Fame? I think so. Super I, I, yeah, I mean, he was a literal, literally a five hundred. It's literally all he did, right? But like, so here's the here's the flip of that. Like Tony Romo was a much better overall quarterback than Eli Manning. Yeah, I could say that. But he that. did not have the obvious success that 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 Eli did, and it sucks for it sucks for Romo because Romo's talent is undeniable. Romo's numbers are undeniable. However. When push came to shove, he didn't win when he needed to, and so I, you know, I mean, it. That's why he's not a Hall of Famer. So I think, I think Eli, yeah, I mean, he deserves it because of the Super Bowls, and I think ultimately that's 
probably what happens to Dak. Do you think that's what Philip R- gets Philip Rivers into is like his numbers, but not his Super Bowls? Like, do you think Philip Rivers is a Hall of Fame quarterback then? I think of him more as as a uh, in higher stature than, than, than Romo. Yeah, yeah. His stats are ridiculous. Yeah. So, um, Walt Frazier also a number ten. DeAndre Hopkins, Tyree Kill, both number tens. Mm-hmm. Uh, in cool. 2010, the Saints beat the Colts. The Colts were five point favorites. I don't know why I put minus seven next to the Saints, but uh, that was the um, onside kick to open the second half game. Uh, Sean Payton actually commented on that the other day because with these um, new kickoff rules, you're not going to really going to be able to. Surprise I'm anxious to see how anybody. that happens. Me too. Uh, I'm. You're not really going to be able to surprise onside anybody. And so he was asked in a press conference the other day, he's like, are you mad that you're not going to be able to surprise onside anybody? He's like, I think you should go ask the Colts that. <laughs> it's good little, he's so good, petty. Good little dig. He's such a, <laughs> he is very he's petty. a very petty, sarcastic man. <laughs> uh, Alabama beat Texas in the BCS National Championship game at the Rose Bowl. That was 37-21. That was the Colt game, right? Where Colt got hurt? That was the Colt game. Um, the Giants beat the Rangers 4-1 in the 2010 World Series. And then here at the Alamo Dome, UConn won the national championship over Stanford, finishing their 39-0 and season. Were you there covering that one? Mm, probably. Probably. <laughs> it's one of the many events that yeah, you were at. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think so. I, I, one of the UConn, I remember going to La Vita after one UConn championship. I don't know if it was the men or the women. Um but both have won championships here in San Antonio. Uh, but yeah, I was probably there. And then 30 years ago today. Oh. We are looking at live pictures of Interstate 5 in Los Angeles. We believe that that white vehicle, which is being trailed by a phalanx of California Highway Patrol cars and helicopters, belongs to Al Collings, who disappeared with O.J. Simpson earlier today. Shortly after Mr. Simpson was informed that he was going to be formally charged with the murder of his wife and the young man who was with her at the time. It is the latest bizarre development in a string of bizarre and shocking developments. That have been- That's crazy. Where were you? Uh, I was at Eric Pfeiffer's house. Uh, we, uh, um, I just graduated from uh, Trinity, and uh, a bunch of us were hanging out watching the Knicks and Rockets, and uh, we were watching that split screen, and it was, I mean, it's a surreal now as as it was then probably even more so because you listen to it like you listen to tom brokaw and he's doing the newsman thing right Mm -hmm. but he has no idea because he's living in the moment he has no idea all of what is about to happen and all of what is going to change the course of history for our country over the next x amount of time yeah, absolutely. You have, he doesn't even know if uh, O.J. Simpson's in the car. Right. Like, they have no idea what's going on. Right. I remember exactly. No, I don't. I wasn't alive for that. Um, but it, I think it's. Is that right? I'm, I wasn't. God, alive. I was. Dang. I was a year and four months away from even being born. Um, but I think it's it's telling that you remember exactly where you were for that moment. Like, there's some moments in sports that just transcend time. There's some moments in history that just sure. transcend time. You remember, I remember exactly where I was, like when 9-11 happened and when all of those course. things happened. I think it's interesting that that moment right there, you remember exactly where you were. Well, it's weird. I, I don't know if word's the right word, but you, you, you said, you know, there's moments in sports history. I mean, it, it's, I don't know. I mean, yes, it's sports because he's, you know, obviously who he was. And it was during this huge, you know, uh, epic, uh, not epic, but uh, NBA finals game. And so they're, we're doing all that kind of stuff. However, it is, I mean, I, off the top of my head, if we did the top 10 things in our country's history over the last 50 years, it's easily in the top 10. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, and it, it might easily be in the top five. I think it's one of the, I think it's in the top five for things that, that, cultivated or not cultivated but like people gravitated towards the most like uh, people uh, remember that more than they remember almost anything almost any other almost anything political yeah 100%. i mean other than 9 11 just because of the sheer magnitude right and like i don't know i mean i don't want to get into this but like i guess maybe i do uh <laughs> i don't i i mean i think people know people talk more about where they were with the oj deal then they certainly would, I believe, on January 6th. Yeah. And you can argue, obviously, January 6th has so much more implications and 
gravity to our country's history than a, a accused murder of you know driving the streets of 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 LA yeah absolutely i mean it was it's just such a crazy moment i didn't even realize that 30 years ago today it was that moment until i got on twitter this morning so wow. had to throw it in there but yeah cool all right i got a bone to pick with david chancellor Let's and we're going to get to it right now so last year september 29th 2023 right here on this very podcast yeah. david had the take <laughs> See, i have no idea david, what's coming. he has no idea david had the take of all takes about travis kelsey and taylor swift <laughs> so my wife and i had a bet um <laughs> that we made it uh on monday night I said it would go two more weeks. She said it would go till my son's birthday, which is November 3rd. So she's got a full month. I have uh, – so the Chiefs have who? They have the Jets this week, and then do we know who they play the, the following week? You need 10 seconds. So it, so that's what I'm thinking is the, the, the cutoff here. Is next week? Is I guess yeah I guess it would be after after next. You have not a lot of faith in these guys. I mean, they play the Vikings next week. Yeah, no, I think the, at some point she's pulling the ripcord on uh, the Vikings. All right, game. so I no, I, you were I, just a little. Off. I was doubting love. <laughs> I am not Cupid. I didn't see true love in front of me. When's the wedding? I had I was thinking about that yesterday or this whole week. God, how bad was that? <laughs> after you came on, or after I, I knew that you were coming on today, I was like, wait a second, didn't he say that they were gonna break up in October? I mean, I you know what it is? She doesn't have to write. She's she's I know what it is. This is it. This is why. Here's my excuse. She's not, she's just touring. She hasn't she doesn't need any sort of material yet to write an album, to write any breakup songs. The moment the next album is ready to come out, boom. Like, I think he, this is, this is also hindsight 2020. This is how I see it. He is, I thought from the get, from the jump, that he was sort of like, oh, this is fun. I'll date Taylor Swift for a moment, right? He's the big, bad, you know, stud athlete. She, I think, falls in love a lot. Okay. So bad. That's so bad. But I think that. <laughs> Truth be known, I think he's the puppy dog. I think he is head over heels in love. And she may be too, but he is, I mean, traipsing around the world. Where's the era's tour? I'm ready to go. After that. And by the way, I think I would too. Uh, absolutely. I cut it off right there. But after that, you, I said, uh, when she breaks up with him. And you were like, oh, you think she breaks up with him. He's def definitely going to break up with her. And oh, I think absolutely. You've come I think you've come along to my Oh, side yes. I, I thought 100% <laughs> he would be like, I'm out. I'm not dealing with this mess. I'm done. And lo and behold, I mean, Here we young are. love. Here we are going into yeah. the next football season. Maybe October this year. Is when <laughs> that's what i meant that's, yeah, what, you meant. that's what i meant <laughs> i just thought i was thinking about it i was like i gotta bring this back david's gotta know what he said but your dac take will bring back at some point oh god <laughs> guy's gonna get 60 million from somebody and then whoever's gonna pay him a, a way overpay him yeah we're not we're not gonna bring that up today because we have other stuff to get to but the fact that trevor lawrence just got 55 million dollars yeah. and that jerry jones is just waiting 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 yeah. and waiting to pay Dak Prescott is going to bite everyone. In the I, ass. By the way, let's not do it, but I, I, I don't think they're going to pay him. I think this is it. I think they're going to pay him. We'll, we'll do that another day. Yeah, he, <laughs> Jerry Jones caves. So what's up, that's what we know about Jerry Jones. Uh, all right, let's get to the U S open. It was awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yesterday. There was everything you wanted and more in that tournament. You had people from, from France, from Japan, from Northern Ireland, from the U.S., all competing for the U.S. Open. You had a live golfer who was at the top. You had a P the PGA stalwart in in uh, Rory yeah. McIlroy, who has been defending the PGA Tour and has been going on media campaigns and has been their their pincushion essentially for years now. And you have both of them competing for this major title. You have Rory, who hasn't won one in 3,600 days, basically. 10 years since the 2014 PGA. You have Bryson, who became... Is that right? Is it yeah, 10 years? Yeah, 2014 PGA. Jeez. I think it's 300 and, or 3,599 days today. 3,600 days tomorrow that he has not won a, uh, a major title. You have Bryson, who was this horribly disliked person four years ago when yes. he won... He won his only major championship at the U.S. Open 
um, during COVID. So there was no fans in the stand. Right. So he couldn't interact with any of them. Then he went to live and he, somehow he became more likable. Why? How? How, how, how did the American public, he, everybody loves a comeback, right? But he didn't come back. There's no comeback from Bryson. All Bryson did was go to live, take $150 million, drop some weight, and come back over to the he PGA became, Tour to compete in a handful of tournaments. Yeah, but he became so much more likable because he was a he was just a, a disgruntled, like weird cat when he was on the PGA Tour. He's the only player that went to live and became more likable. I don't really know how he did it, but his – PR team deserves like a gold medal yeah. or something, but he is, you see him everywhere on TikTok. He's doing, he's doing fan interactions. He's doing these weird videos and challenges where he's playing with junior clubs or women's clubs and trying to hit par on holes. And he's doing all this media and he's just become this friendly, likable person. I frankly, I haven't seen a transformation of a public image like this in a very long time, maybe if ever, because if you pay attention to the PGA Tour, if you pay attention to golf, when he was in that feud with Brooks, most people were on Brooks' side. Yeah, which is crazy. Because Bryson was being a douchebag. Like, he was being a douche. Yeah. And so... My, <laughs> my father-in-law used that same word really? <laughs> in describing him. She goes, and he goes, yesterday at, de at breakfast, he goes, and he's not anymore. <laughs> but we were talking about it, and I said, I, he said, are you watching the U.S. Open? And I said... I am. I said, and I'm going to be rooting like crazy for Rory. And he's like, oh, really? He goes, I, I think I kind of like Bryson. And I don't know what's happened to Rory McIlroy. He is, you know, everything that you just laid out is so perfect in the way the storyline is, is sort of, you know, molded. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this. I can't even take credit for this, but like. He's been fighting Greg Norman and Liv almost single-handedly by yeah, himself for four years. for the last couple of years, yeah. and he had a Greg Norman-like collapse yesterday. He had a collapse in a major championship that Norman would be appreciative. It's not the fact that he blew a couple of strokes in the final three holes. It's the fact that we're talking a two-foot putt. We're talking a couple. The one on 16 is unforgivable. Four. 18 is fine because 18 was downhill. But 16, holy God. For reference, he was 300 or 496 for 496. Perfect on three footers and in this season until 16th putt. So the thing, the thing that I think is debatable about yesterday whether or not you like Bryson DeChambeau or, you know, Roy, there's two things that happened yesterday that seemed everybody seems to be gravitating towards now, the day after. A, what did you think of the D-bag in the stands hollering out, U-S-A, U-S-A? All right? <laughs> this is when Rory's trying to, to, to... This is right after Rory blows it. This is before. Was this right before yes, he blew it? This is before. It? This is as he's trying to, to to line up the putt and look and do all this kind of stuff. And then obviously, yes, afterwards as well. So a that, and then b, this is my favorite. We see the camera shot of Rory in the in the scorer's tent. He looks miserable. Bryce, he looks miserable. He looks like he's got he flu, look, COVID. He, uh, he looks um, like he wants ingrown to ingrown tail. Yeah, or like, tail. Maybe an ingrown tail. The idea, the idea, and then he just bolts. He he walks out, gets in his car, and leaves. And everybody's freaking out. Oh, it's horrible sportsmanship. Oh, look at this. Bryson lost one time to this guy, and he went up and he hugged the guy and blah, blah, blah. So, poor sport or human being? Okay. Both so, those two things are, are, to me, those are the two things that, like, I'm like, oh, this is good stuff. Yeah. For, so, for both of those things, one, the storylines going into yesterday were awesome, as you, as you pointed out. For both of those things, I think the context matters. One of the storylines going into yesterday was that Rory was paired up with Patrick Cantlay. If anyone who, if anyone likes golf, you remember the Ryder Cup last talk year. Talk about unlikable. Yeah, talk about unlikable. Patrick Cantlay is unlikable as hell. But you saw last year when Patrick Cantlay uh, during the Ryder Cup, and he was the hat tip, and it right. was the no hat thing because he was, wanted to get paid. And it was yeah, and it was just, it, all the context around that. So they had this feud going in. And so I think that the Ryder Cup and it being the U.S. Open, if this was, you know, 
the Masters or if this was the PGA, I don't think that they would have been chanting USA, USA. Right. I think it was the fact that there was all these things that came into it. You playing with Patrick Cantlay. Now Rory was the one that blew up on the on the American team during the Ryder Cup. And now he's the one that's that's blowing the U.S. Open. I think that the, all of that played into it. So I really didn't mind the USA thing. Like, I get it. I get why people are a little mad about it. Sure. But I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And I, I, I'm going to sound like a Rory apologist, but like, I get why he left. Yes, I do. Like, he has carried the weight of the world. The weight of the PGA Tour has rested on his shoulders for years, four years, basically. They have been using him as their scapegoat. He's, they've been using him as their, as their pin cushion. He has been taking the slings and arrows from the live fans and from golf people. And he's been doing it with class and, and as good as you can. And then the one time, that he's right there for an open. It's his. It's in his grasp. He birdies 9, 10, 12, 13. He has a two-shot lead with five to play. He bur or he bogeys three out of the final four holes, yeah. including two uh, putts in less than four feet. I get. I completely understand why he left. That had to have been just gut-wrenching, horrifying. There's that I can't even imagine what he was going through in that moment. So I feel like... Some people on the internet, and the internet's always undefeated, and the internet's always wrong as well. People want it, but people want their cake and eat it too, right? They, 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 they want golf decorum when it comes to, you know what? I need Rory to stick around and go out and shake Bryson's hand. That was never going to happen. Like that's not going to happen. That it, it, you need if you need that in your life, you got something wrong with your life. I have no doubt. And by the way, if it didn't happen, who cares anyway? But I have no doubt that at some point last night or today, yep. Rory texted Bryson and said, hey, man, congratulations. I'm good with that. I'm, I'm okay with that. This isn't, this isn't the uh, NBA Finals or the Super Bowl where the game ends all at one time. Guys are done. Guys are leaving. Rory wasn't going to walk back out onto the 18th green. He was done. He was done 10 minutes after Bryson was done. So he wasn't going to walk back out. But by the way, if you're hollering out, oh my gosh, golf decorum, golf decorum, but you are in favor of the USA chant, that whole scene, and I don't have a problem with it either, but that whole scene was Ryder Cup from the cheering and the yelling of USA to Bryson and I don't have a problem with this, but this isn't golf etiquette. Bryson putting before the guy that no, he was no, no, playing no, no, with no. and that's then not, going crazy. That's not on Bryson, though, because, oh. because golf etiquette is he was out. He, he was, was out. out. No, he so was th out. that's not on him. That's Matt, on Pavon. I was going to bring that crazy, in. That's though, what he's supposed the, to do. I, he, he, no, but what damn, he, he almost fell down on the ground no, rolling around what, doing bear claw. What he's supposed bear, What's supposed to happen and what has happened in previous it's major ridiculous. championships is Matthew Pavon. And first of all, I hate the way he spells his name because he's fr one because he's a well, freshman. Let's not hate him because he's French. Well, I don't hate him because he's French. Okay. I hate him because of the way his, the French spell <laughs> Matthew. M A T T H I E I E U. I hate that. Okay. Anyway, I don't hate him because he's French. Okay. I, I love French people, Wemby. Don't 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 think love, I do. Okay. Sorry. Um, anyway, Matthew Pavon is at, technically inside yeah. of Bryson, and, and so what has happened in previous majors is. You ask, you know that this guy's about to win the U.S. Right. Open. You know it. You say, do you want me to clear it for you? His Also, his ball marker, if you look, his marker was almost in Bryson's he didn't line. Want, Bryson didn't want the pressure of putting that thing out. No, that's not true. No, oh, that's no, why he Pavone, didn't do it. No, Pavone didn't even ask. And that, that's the golf. I thought right Bryson there. was going to take his shirt off and run around I wouldn't like have this. had a problem with it if he did oh my gosh why well, I, I don't either but like <laughs> the same people that are hollering out for that's my point is the people that are yelling for bryson are yelling at rory for not coming out and be like congratulations bryson on winning the u.s open yeah i just yesterday was so good and so horrible in so many different ways just because like i do root for rory yeah i can't even imagine how yesterday felt so I feel really bad for him. But in, in the same vein, I feel really like I'm happy for Bryson. And I was totally on the Brooks side of things yeah. when they had that. I, I don't like any live golfers really. I've Even me, who was like super PGA or bust, like I've softened up on all the live guys I, now. I, like I really don't give a crap anymore about so, that stuff. So here's the thing. I, I think I might need to turn in my USA card. But like of all the golfers right now, because of there's no Tiger, I mean, I root for Rory above... Brooks, Bryson, Scotty, 
Jordan, I root for Scotty. Justin. Uh, by the way, um, just one quick little Tiger thing, and this was monumentally a shift in my um, being. I tweeted out, I guess sometime last week, please stop asking him. Please, please, please stop asking Tiger Woods at any golf tournament that he plays, and it's only going to be the majors. Stop asking him if he thinks he's going to win. He's not going to win. He's not. He's not going to win ever again. So stop asking it. What do you want him to say? Do you want him to look you in the eye and say, no, I'm not going to win. I'm just here because I don't know why. It's just, it's, it, 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 I got to be honest, Matt, as a guy who's watched almost every shot he's ever hit, it's sad to watch. And it's a gut punch every time somebody does that. Now, do you think you're going to win the tournament? Well, he still he still did a lot better than Phil Mickelson did. So, <laughs> where was did I miss? Where was Phil? Um, at the bottom of the standings. Did he play? He played. He was nine over on day one and like eight over on day two or something like that. Holy gosh! He didn't hit a he didn't hit a birdie all tournament. Um, on that happy note, but we're gonna get to uh, the decapitation of Caitlin Clark. Oh so, my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so, in case you missed it yesterday, the Fever played the Sky. Um, in Indiana, and we can roll that tape real quick, Luis. Um, this play right here is the one in question. Mm. Down Angel. goes Caitlin. So Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark obviously have a history I, of Iowa, LSU, and all of the pub that Caitlin Clark gets. And then this happens yeah. in that game. And it, to me, oh, that 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 angle's the word. That that yeah, third angle seems to be the it's not worst. a great angle. So. Putting the game aside, I mean, let's hear from Angel Reese, who didn't uh, do herself any favors either right after the game. But this is what Angel Reese said after the game and after that hit. It's a basketball play. I can't control the refs. They affected the game, obviously, a lot tonight. So, can I mean, I'm always going for the ball. But y'all going to play that clip, what, 20 times before Monday? So, it's cool. I think we went up really strong a lot of times, and we didn't get a lot of calls. And going back and looking at the film, I've seen a lot of calls that weren't made. I guess some people got a special whistle, but. Like, <laughs> so I'm going to try and put this as delicately as possible. Um, regarding the play, I didn't think it, like, I think it's a borderline play. It's a, it's a basket. I, I wouldn't mind if she said it was a basketball play. I was sure. trying to make a play on the ball. Sure, sure, sure. I think it's all the context that surrounds it. You have the rivalry between Angel Reese and between Caitlin Clark. You have two weeks ago, Kennedy Carter, that whole debacle, when Kennedy Carter pushes over Caitlin, Re or Caitlin Clark um, during the last matchup between the Sky and the Fever. And now you have Angel Reese coming in, hitting her upside the head, whether intentional or not. It's a bad look. And you have all of the things that Angel Reese has said. In 20 years, they're going to remember my impact on this game as well as hers. Like, she is so clearly i'll give her the benefit of the doubt that was a basketball play sure even if it was you take it to mean the wrong thing because of everything that has gone into this like it's such a bad look for angel reese despite how great she is and despite how great uh caitlin clark is it's just you're adding so much fuel to the fire by what you do and say at this point so you know there's so many things with this. Number one, kudos to them and their rivalry for getting us to talk about this. Fair. It's everywhere all the time. However, um, I can't remember who I was listening to last week who said it. They summed it up best, so I'll steal it from them. No, nobody's going to be talking about this in a month and a half. And I don't mean because it, I mean the season will still be going on, but football will be here. And – I mean, this is this is a great thing for sportscasters around the country to have in the dead period of, you know, maybe you don't have an NBA team to root for now. You don't care about baseball and you're waiting two months out for football. Um, here's the thing that I, I sort of go back and forth with. Um, the race war is nauseating and it it's a real turnoff because every time you see a WNBA story, it's almost now we have 
some player going after some player, and generally it appears like it's a African American player going up against Caitlin Clark, and half the time, the announcer, not the player, but the announcer has somehow made it about race. I don't know if it's about race or not, but I don't think everything about this has to be a race. I am old enough to remember Bird versus Magic, and that was fantastic when it comes to rivalry. You had a white guy, you had a black guy. I don't know if you saw color or not. I was 11 years old. I saw green and I saw purple. And those are the colors that I liked. And those were the colors that I rooted for or rooted against. I understand the day, I understand that we live in a different political climate, but the idea that this has become what it's become is a little sickening. The other thing is, the, the other thing is, Angel Reese said a couple of weeks ago, I'll be the villain. I'll be the villain. You guys need me to be the villain. I'll be the villain. Cool. But you get the, the when she says the y'all, y'all going to do this, you know, 20 times, mm -hmm. she doesn't want to be the villain. <clears throat> if she wanted to be the villain, then she would just accept it. But there's always this challenge. And then there's, just so we're clear, we, just so we can make sure that we're a little bit even with everything. Sometimes I get the feeling that this is one of those NBA fights where the second person gets the tech. The second person gets called out. The second person is the one that gets in trouble. If you guys think that Caitlin Clark is not doing anything to sort of egg some of this on, and by the way, I think it's good. And by the way, I think what Angel Reese did – I think it was a basketball play. And even if it wasn't, I'm okay with that too. Because I like the bad boys in the 80s from the, the <laughs> Pistons. I like a little bit of oomph. I like a little bit of angst with my sports, my heroes, my villains, whatever you want to call them. I just think there's a little bit more to all of this. But the idea that it's, the idea that for the most part, we've turned this into the African-American players in the WNBA <laughs> against the lone white star, which, by the way, is not true to begin with. Yeah, Sabrina Inescu. I mean, there's I mean, is, is just it reduces it, it reduces this to something that it doesn't need to be. I agree. It doesn't need to be that. Um, I try and take the race part out of it just because I think it's so absurd sometimes. Um even even they asked Caitlin Clark about it, and she's like, "Don't use this to put. Don't use me to to push your agenda." And right. It, and and then that was twisted yeah. by some of the other players, of of like, "Well, you're here. You have yeah. a platform." And it was like, "Guys, what's happening here? Yeah. So what, I, what are we? What are we? What are we doing? This is what I don't get. Is like Caitlin Clark can't do anything. Like someone is always going to be mad in this situation, whether it's Angel Reese's fans being mad or whether it's Caitlin Clark's being fans being mad. But taking it holistically, you look at it and it's like. Caitlin Clark has done everything right. She has said the right things. She has done her best to stay, to be the hero that we're all building her up to be. Yeah. Be the star that we're all putting her up to be. She says all of the right things in all of her press conferences. And then you have someone like Angel Reese who is doing the wrong things, like, saying the wrong things, saying like at just throwing more fuel on the fire. You guys can let this go if you want to, but Angel Reese and some of the other players keep saying outlandish crap that keeps adding to the narrative. And it's the narrative that obviously Angel Reese is not happy with. You guys are going to play this 20 times by Monday? It's like, yeah, we're probably going to play it 20 times by Monday because you just smacked her upside the head and you're you and she's her. That's how this is going to go. You've had, you have known that this is going to happen. You guys played twice in the uh, women's NCAA tournament and it was just like this. You know that that's going to happen. But she has, I mean, in her defense, in her defense, she says, but I have, I have a ring. She does. And, and Caitlin doesn't. And I am part of this equation. There can't be a hero without an anti-hero. And whether she wants to be that, whether she doesn't want to be that, and, and, and who knows? Maybe, the, I mean, there is, I don't, there's not a maybe, there is part of this world, part of society, part of reality says it's inverted. That Caitlin Clark is the anti-hero and Angel Reese, it, it's almost like Cobra Kai, where 
Huh? It's almost like Cobra Kai where they've inverted Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence. <laughs> I think you, I, I think that's what we're seeing Speaking here. of, have you seen How I Met Your Mother? Yes. The, you remember? Oh. You remember Barney Stinson thinks that. Um, oh, it's so great! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thinks oh, that Ralph God. Macchio is the is the bad guy. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he hit him on the beach. The guy was just hanging out with his girl, and here comes little <laughs> Danny Larusso, and he sucker punches him <laughs> huh? with an illegal gave, crane kick. Johnny Johnny Lawrence gave him back his little radio. <laughs> <laughs> so good man guy i loved I, johnny lawrence is one of my all-time favorite uh 80s characters so between between that and you uh dropping the anti-hero reference here we're gonna we're gonna wrap this thing up as we started it with taylor swift references but i so. i do think it's great for i i do think all of this is i it's wish for, we, i wish we could talk NBA. about basketball i wish we could just talk about a rivalry i think some of the uh outrageous folks in the press who want to make this more than what it is i wish they'd go away i wish we could just talk about a really cool physical rivalry between two really good athletes we haven't had one of those in WNBA in a long time and for people who are new to the WNBA, which is basically have we ever had which it? is basically everybody um i think that it's really cool that they have a rivalry i would just like i don't know it's something about it's something about how the rivalry is transpiring that is Putting a bad taste in my mouth is, I how, gotcha. is how I would I would phrase that. Uh, real quick on the way out, NBA Finals game five tonight. Yeah. The Mavs came back and kicked the living crap out of Dude. the Celtics in game four, which was their winner go home game. Basically, every game is winner go home now uh, for the Mavs. Who you got tonight I like in Boston? I like Luca. I, you I, like the Mavs tonight? Yeah, I think the Mavs win it tonight. I, I they're six and a half point on I, underdogs. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, <laughs> I I think. Uh, I, I think Tatum will fold under the pressure tonight. Really? Yeah. So, yeah. Along that along that point, do you not think that the that the Celtics have enough to 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 win the game regardless? No, no. I. Uh, what do you mean? Jalen Brown, uh, Drew Holiday, Chris Stapps, Porzingis, if he plays, Al Horford. Do you not no, think that I their think team that, is good I, enough to win regardless? I do. I think that they have a great team, and they, I think they'll win this series. I just don't think they win tonight. I, I I mean they've the, the lost the pressure of it being in Boston. Well, they've lost uh they've lo already lost a couple of home games. I mean, have they lost on the road? I think they I think they've, they've the lost games the road, that they yeah. lost in the playoffs this year are all at home. I they, think they lost one in, in certainly come coming into uh the first couple of rounds, the only games that they lost were on the road. I think there's a ton of pressure for them to win not only at home, but to win tonight. And I I just I like Luca, man. I, I just, I mean, whether you like his act, whether you think he's a whiner, all of that aside, like he is tough as nails. He seems like he is built for this moment. He will, you want to talk about a guy who likes being the villain. Like that guy likes being the villain. Oh, oh by the way, um, the other person that I was thinking of earlier who's kind of transformed their image is Kyrie Irving. But, oh, by him, far. Him, him and Bryson have just done a whole complete but 180. He is, he like and he's another one. Yeah. I mean, he's due. Yeah, I'll take uh, I'll take the Celtics tonight. I don't yeah. feel I don't feel good about it. Um, I'm just gonna go with the money line, but <laughs> I because I look at the odds. So anyway, that's who we got tonight. I can't wait to be We're wrong a and degenerate have, gambler. I, maybe not a degenerate. I'm kidding. But, yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm, Jordan, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not betting on. He's ping never pong. been <laughs> Sorry, I know we got to wrap up, but a, a friend of mine the other day did bet on Indian cricket. So that's Ooh, that, there. That's out there. Um. That's wow. all we got for you today on the Sneaker Shanklings podcast. Um, I'm glad to see that David took his uh, Taylor Swift reference as a champ, or like a champ. Um, you two kids have fun. Taylor and Travis, you guys are doing great. Remember to download, rate, review, Just like Jack and Diane. Give us a five-star rating. Sucking tell a friend, tell dogs. an enemy. We'll be right I'll back here on Thursday. Until then, everyone have a good week. Happy Father's Day.